Hello and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani and let's see what we have got in the PIB of 22nd March. I hope you all are doing good. And dear friends, uh, today our special topic is based on water. Now, this topic of water as a subject, or you can take it as a topic as well, it is one, one of the most important topic, of course, no doubt, because it is associated with our life. The second thing is, if you go through your syllabus then you will find many other items directly and indirectly they are affected by water so let me give you some examples like say for example you have infrastructure then you have uh, development then you can also add health issues or public health and there are many other things as well i will leave it on you guys to open your syllabus and go through it and find out uh, uh, different directly and indirectly uh, things that are directly and indirectly affected by this water now can you identify the person you can see on your screen give me the name as well as nickname of this person or a sort of title that this person has got and with this uh, the last picture was from Udvara Udvara is a, pl uh, a place in Gujarat it is a small village in Gujarat we talked about this village remember we talked about this a Wi-Fi city and things like that. So here you find Parsi temple, right? Parsis, they have their temple here and it is in Gujarat. With this, dear friends, you can download the PDF of this lecture from my FB page, which is here on your screen. You can follow me. You can get in touch with me as well. And Study IQ provides pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams, as you can see on your screen. Now, if you check our website, then you will find a bit of discount. And it's not a bit. It's a huge discount that you are going to get on our pen drive and tablet courses. Make the most out of it, right? And... Uh, uh, it will help you a lot because uh, these courses are designed by the best faculties of our country. Now, the first item that we have is coming from Parliament. Now, this is not the first time we are discussing this thing. I'm sure you are well aware about this is something that we see every day in our news channels. This is something where we, we see... Um, on Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha channel as well, isn't it? It's It's basically they are wasting a huge amount of national hours right it's been three weeks uh, right since this log jam is going on vijay goel who is the junior minister of parliamentary affairs he is going to have a chat with he is going to have a thorough discussion with opposition leaders but we know it very well that it's not and and I'm, again when i'm discussing this thing with you guys see i am not inclined towards any political party i have to explain this thing because many a times the students feel that uh, uh, dear educator is trying to promote a particular party not at all let me tell you that when bjp was in opposition they used to do the same thing now when congress and other parties are in opposition they are behaving in the same way at the end of the day it is loss for the whole nation the other thing is that recently pranav mukherjee our president our former president he said this thing and this is very right as well he said that what we are observing nowadays is small parties right very small parties tiny parties who are there they have five ten M uh, mps in the house and what they are doing they are basically uh, b being very aggressive in the well they are stepping in the well and they are they are throwing papers and other things so basically small parties are 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 not allowing many small i'm not saying all small parties there are a couple of parties small parties they are basically um, creating this situation through which our parliament cannot process its or cannot do its work with this uh, you are well aware about this amount as well per minute we have to spend we spend somewhere around 2.5 lakh rupees on an average 2.5 lakh rupees per minute to run our parliament from last 14 days if you can see that total 14 days are totally wasted so you can imagine how much money we have lost right the other thing is uh, there are many bills important bills that are pending in the parliament and one thing that i must say here is that government has tried its level best government has said this many a times that we are ready to discuss whatever we like but then as well we see there are a couple of parties who are not ready to listen now this payment of gratuity amendment bill has been passed and it will be helpful for for many people because uh, earlier on this gratuity amount was 10 lakh rupees but now it is increased up to 20 lakh rupees if you ask a labor minister then he's saying that this is going to be helpful for 
women because uh, particularly maternity leave and other things right if you want to change make necessary changes with it now because of this gratuity bill what they have done with this amendment is that uh, now you don't have to amend the law as far as this met, uh, gratuity bill is concerned what you have to do is uh, the government can just uh, increase or decrease as necessary right uh, as it fits as it thinks is necessary so without amending or without going through this whole lengthy process this is a good thing quick decision moving on a scheme has been launched and this scheme is for a silk industry all those people associated with this silk business particularly silk production and things like that now the name of the scheme is integrated scheme for the development of skill industry this has got a green signal from the cabinet and of course as you know it is for silk uh, for the development of self uh, silk industry so here the main you can say aim of this scheme is to make our country self-sufficient in silk production by 2022 the other thing is that government is going to support all those individuals who want to set up let's say for example if you want to develop infrastructure pertaining to your silk business like uh, for your uh, for your agriculture and things you know sericulture not agriculture but for your sericulture if you want to construct something and then government the central government will provide you 50 percent right 50 percent of whatever uh, cost or whatever this whole amount is of 50 percent will be given to you by the central government the other thing is that um, for uh, say for example SCST uh, government will provide 65 percent of support so if you are setting up a infrastructure of say for example 1 lakh rupees so 65,000 will be provided by the central government and in some areas right like you have Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh uh, then you have Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, in all these areas, right? Uh, 80 percent, up to 80 percent, uh, not up to, but 80 percent, uh, this infrastructure uh, development uh, will be provided by the central government. Uh, so this, with the with this, we can understand how much push this uh, central government or the government of India wants. Uh, us to succeed in this silk business uh, in next uh, two years uh, from 85 lakh our target is to uh, to give job to another 15 lakh so that means basically in silk industry in our country there should be one crore people by 2020 and with this dear friends a very important change has been made by ministry of finance it is associated with our youngsters or our boys and girls when i say boys and girls i'm not just talking about uh, those boys and girls who are in school i'm also talking about those boys and girls who are serving our nation by being there on the line of duty now unfortunately we see this thing that many of our brave soldiers when i am saying soldiers i'm referring both men and women uh, we lose them uh, because of this various attacks and things like that now the thing is they when they when they join army navy or air force right uh, one thing uh, hopefully is there in their mind that government will look after their family just in case if anything goes wrong with them now uh, if you find this type of uh, caps earlier on or till now there was a cap on education a cap on education basically means that say for example this person here right uh, his son is living somewhere in punjab say for example and uh, that kid will be allowed up maximum up to 10,000 rupees per month so imagine if that that particular kid is doing some high level courses uh, then anything about 10,000 will not be looked after by the government this is something that was there but now this cap has been removed there was a protest as well and it is right too because what they are asking for is just education isn't it if they are educating themselves and uh, this is going to be beneficial in the long run for the country as well and it is going to motivate our soldiers too who are who are there on the line of control so this is a good thing good start of course it is going to cost government a little bit extra it is means government will feel a little bit of pinch here but in the long run if we if we see then it is a win-win situation for everyone moving on to another item very important topic here 
it is basically associated with Champaran Satyagraha and when we say Champaran then we are talking about Mahatma Gandhi. Now Mahatma Gandhi himself is a very important topic for your examination for generally speaking every examination every competitive exam generally speaking and uh, Vyanka Naidu he was uh, in Bihar for 106th Bihar Divas celebration. Now the thing is uh, Bapu at that point of time talked about Ram Rajya and when he is referring to Ram Rajya basically he is talking about uh, this uh, uh, it's it's not a religious uh, a religious country that is talking about religious when I say that I mean to say only one religion ruling over the country not at all when he's talking about Ram Rajya then he is referring to this utopian state in which no one sleeps hungry everyone gets education proper quality education quality healthcare services skill development equal platform for men and women and for poor and rich there is a less gap between poor and rich and things like that so this is ram rajya and then you can add add other things that less trouble a good environment right uh, good facilities like internet and other things you can add some contemporary things as well uh, like internet you can add uh, electronic vehicles and other things uh, safety and I can go on and on. So this is what Ram uh, utopian state basically. Uh, so remember this thing. The other thing is that this is very rightly said by Mahatma Gandhi, and it was uh, been highlighted by our vice president as well. That if we want to change our country, then we have to change the situation of our villages, isn't it? Because even today, uh, majority of our population, somewhere around seventy percent, are living in village area or rural area. So. If we don't change this situation, means we don't want them to come to urban area. Uh, if they are coming, then that's fine as well. But what we want is uh, we want to provide all these urban facilities, urban amenities in this rural area. With this, uh, dear friends, uh, some important items associated with Champaran. Say Gandhiji was uh, living in South Africa for some 22 plus years. So he did uh, some uh, some work over there as well and substantial work over there uh, so he, he had this reputation he was well aware uh, means he was aware about this strategy of british how they used to work and things like that you can say to some extent he was knowing how they work or their mindset the other thing is Gandhiji was famous in India as well, not as famous miss after Champaran he was ag again he reached a new height but there are there were few people uh, right they were knowing about mahatma gandhi before he came here uh, from south africa and uh, when he came here at, at that point of time as well many leaders were aware about mahatma gandhi that he played a bit of important role back in south africa now this champaran satyagraha is again a very important topic last year that is 2017 we celebrated 100 years of champaran satyagraha it all started back in 1917 it was uh, associated with this indigo farming right indigo farming and uh, then you have this 3 by 20 rule as well at that point of time so your best it was known as thin khatia and uh, your best piece of land uh, should be utilized for indigo plantation and then you can have whatever your land left land you can use it for your uh, food production so this was I think the other thing is that it was so profitable this indigo for this British traders that uh, many officers they they left this government job and then they joined this uh, then they started working as a uh, or they cho chose this business of uh, taking land on contract and forcing people to produce this indigo it was in demand in world market and things like that anyways Gandhiji uh, steps in and when he steps in he comes out with a new innovative method as well which was earlier on not known in india or not applied uh, by other leaders what he did is basically gandhiji when he said that he's going ready to help the people of champaran at that point of time the commissioner uh, issued a letter uh, against gandhiji he said that you cannot enter into this area we do not allow we, we don't allow you to enter this area and gandhiji said that this is my country I can go anywhere I like and I will go over there so why Gandhiji did this thing or what is innovative about this thing the thing is if Gandhiji is say for example if he is being jailed for 
breaking this order of commissioner then people of Jamparan right uh, they will feel a sort of sympathy for Gandhiji so again Gandhiji is losing nothing in fact British uh, they are losing their reputation the other thing is that if Gandhiji is allowed even if when he is denied and if he is going there and no one is stopping him then at that point of time again it will boost the confidence of people and uh, you know so this is this is this was a very you can say a very calculated move by Mahatma Gandhi and then he did all this research he had a word with some 8,000 plus uh, farmers and things like that and then there was a committee and finally it was decided that we need to drop this whole system off indigo the way things are going on cannot uh, this is not a sustainable way for farmers then you have this finding the truth improving the lives of ordinary people and building trust in public and continued efforts to achieve freedom this were the three you can say main things that are associated with Jamparan Satyagraha with this dear friends uh, today as well we have been free from 70 years plus but uh, still we find this various types of discrimination in our society uh, there are socio-economic inequalities as well and other things we need to together sort this thing out now Ministry of Culture uh, UNESCO I'm, I'm sure you are aware about this thing if not then this is UNESCO here the full form is given now if UNESCO is a, an organization that looks after this World Heritage Site and this is something important I would like you guys to remember this thing that in last three years under this cultural category we got our three important places right the first one is Nalanda University the second one is this the architectural work of Lake Kurbusha it is in Chandigarh and then historic city of Ahmedabad remember a couple of months ago maybe four or five months ago four months ago we discussed this thing on Ahmedabad and uh, you have one mixed category site in our country mixed category then you have this Kanchanjunga National Park that is in Sikkim so remember this items now let's uh, talk about our special topic it is World Water Day 22nd March is celebrated as a World Water Day by United Nation the theme this year is nature for water the reason why we celebrate is of course uh, to create awareness because you see this situation this paradox that 71 percent of our earth is covered by water but then as well we see every single day people are dying because of lack of uh, clean lack of access to clean water people die because or people are there are so many people right uh, they are suffering from many diseases because of lack of safe drinking water or accessibility to safe drinking water water management I believe is a subject uh, that should be taught in schools right every single child and this children should we should create our small children's as a brand ambassador some practical work uh, should be done in at school level and this should be it's not just a school level in at college level at university level as well we should have something some sort of course that can that is dedicated uh, towards climate change water air and other things you know so uh, with the help of this thing we can change uh, we can change the way we are doing things and we need to think out loud we need to discuss this thing as much as we can how we can spread awareness best practices and other things now let's go through some important figures because this is a very important topic if we go through the through the work done by national commission on water and our national commission of water in our country is a premier organization right it's a premium body that looks after all this water and other things and what it said uh, two decades ago that there is going to be a very serious means at, at that point of time as well it said that uh, we are going through a very precarious balance as far as water is concerned and see 20 years have passed and at present you know the way things are going on in our country speedy development we are building infrastructure we are uh, you know agriculture land is shrinking at the same time population has increased so we need more food for more food we are using more water because nearly 70 percent of our use as far as this fresh water is concerned as like let me break it down for you say we have 100 liters of water so out of this 100 liter roughly speaking 70 percent will be used or 70 liters will be used for agriculture for food production this is not a sustainable way of production at all the other thing is uh, united nations says by 2050 this demand will the demand of water will will be in excess right will exceed basically the supply so more water will be required than what we 
uh, will have at that point of time the global demand of water is increasing at one percent rate which is a very serious thing because if you compare countries like or if you go through the figures of countries like india then you will find that definitely it is more than one percent because of the pace and the population and other things now the world water development report which is released by united nation again you have to remember many times you find this type of questions in your mcq so this united nations report what it says or recommends is nature-based solutions now let me give you an example uh, just a, you can say a gist or a gist of uh, what this nature-based solutions uh, could be this report of united nation talks about this alwar district of rajasthan what we did in alwar district is basically first of all we created this small structures right small scale uh, changes like traditional methods like you know this uh, creating step bells and uh, uh, using or creating small ponds and other things uh, so we can store water the other thing is that uh, second step that we took is we looked after our forest as well in our district so once this forests uh, were looked after together this small scale steps and forest by doing these two things what we did is basically this groundwater right uh, this groundwater table was bit recharged Posi positive results were seen here and we need to sort out our groundwater because india is the worst offender in the world when it comes to groundwater we are using more groundwater than china plus usa together can you imagine that together they are not using that much water that we are using as far as groundwater is concerned and uh, we know now you know that 70 percent water is used in agriculture so what we can do about it now india is a rice producing country is india is a right rice consuming country as well and uh, our, our method of rice plantation is not sustainable we need to learn some new tricks uh, from madagascar we talked about this country madagascar a couple of days ago a system of rice when president was there so they have this system of rice intensification what they do is rather than you know our fields are basically submerged in water this rice fields or rice crop so what they did uh, rather than submerging this crop under water they started they they applied this thing they just managed the soil right uh, they they ensured that the soil is moist enough and by doing this uh, the production was good as well the cost went down and uh, the yield was good and uh, water reduction right uh, this necessity of water was reduced by 25 to 50 percent so something like this can be applied in our country apart from that industry as well they have to learn to recycle water that's everything in today's discussion these are your uh, questions these are your new questions these are your th that were your answers and I'll see you all soon, dear friends. Till then, enjoy your studies. Jai Hind.